Hello, my Tubies. It's Sheila True Love here with you once again. And today I want to share with you what's truly behind the mask of the narcissist. I have something I want to play for you. It's uh, 4.30 in the morning, but hey, what can I tell you? I've, I've taken two days off of vacation, so I've been sleeping because I was really exhausted trying to catch up on my beauty sleep, all this partying. I am not a young spring chicken anymore. I can't party the way I used to, so I had to take like two days off to uh, build myself up. But I have so much comp time and so much vacation time and sick leave. I got all that stuff and I have to use it anyway, so I might as well take some time. But anyway, I'm up at 4.30 in the morning and I want to share something with you. This is unbelievable. This is a uh, show I was watching. It's called Female Killers. And this one is entitled Brandita Taliano Documentary. And it's just amazing. This is what's behind the mask of narcissist. Listen in. We'll discuss it as we go along. When you dwell on the fringes. She was the girl who was trying to find something better, didn't know how to get there. Love can be cheap. All Brandita wanted was someone to love her. He threatened me. And life even cheaper. She knew that something awful was going to happen. Now, let me uh, create the <clears throat> setting for you. This is a female who, her name is... Brandita, she's a prostitute and a heroin addict. Um, and this is about a man, he's married, he's been with his wife, they have children together. His wife is, I believe, 55, and he's, I think he's like 57 years old. And the things that this man is going to put his wife through is just unbelievable. And the things that this prostitute is going to actually put this poor wife through Let's go through this. Let's 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 listen to this step by step and tell me is this narcissistic, psychopathic or just both? Actually, I think it's both, to be honest. In Silmar, in the San Fernando Valley, California, 1988. 52-year-old Joan Dolly's job is to bring joy to others. She worked at the Hallmark store, so I could imagine she was a part of a lot of people's happiest moments as they go in there and buy their cards. Dennis has been acting weird lately. But yeah, this is his wife. She's 52. Yeah, she works in a Hallmark store, and her job is to bring joy. You know how when you buy a nice Hallmark card, that's when you care enough to send the very best, which I don't like people giving me cards if it's not Hallmark, just so you know going forward, in case you ever want to send me a card. It has got to be Hallmark when you look, care enough to send the very best. I love you. Anyway, this is where she works. So she's talking to one of her co-workers and she's saying she thinks her husband is creeping. He's cheating, she's saying. Joan's own Hallmark moments are few and far between. I think he's having an affair. Are you sure, Joan? Her 32-year marriage to childhood sweetheart, Dennis, is losing its luster. Dennis. Okay, did you hear that? 32 years of marriage to her childhood sweetheart. This is why I tell you when people sit here and tell me that they've been married for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and they try to act like that's something to be proud of, I'm never proud of that. I'm more proud of someone who's like um, Elizabeth Taylor. Someone like Joan Collins, someone who has been married like uh, numerous times. Those are the females that I, I, I look up to and I admire because to sit around here and put up with all of this abuse for that many years, that's not something that's admirable. And I don't want to hear that garbage about, well, it's about working through your marriage. That's, you know what? No. Because females who constantly put up with this abuse, those are the exact females, they're the reason why you can't find any decent men anymore. 
because to sit up here and put up with all of this abuse and disrespect and cheating, this is redonkulous. Forget ridiculous. It's redonkulous. Was retired Air Force. He looked like just the average Joe, the family man. He had kids at home. Why were you so late last night? An old friend turned up at the club. Oh, really? An old friend. As Dennis drifts away, Joan pulls on the purse strings. You've been going through money like water. Joan really kept tight reins on Dennis. I earn it. Not as much as you spend. Dennis complained to people that his wife just controlled him. That, you know, he wanted to buy certain things. He wanted a boat. He wanted a jacuzzi. She would always hold the purse strings. She'd always say, no, 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 no. You can't have that. And it's not a matter that the woman don't want the, who don't want a, a yacht, a jacuzzi or whatever. But when you have a, more, things that are more priority, like keeping the lights on and making sure the mortgage is paid and there's food. And then you got the cable thing going on and then you got to buy clothes. Don't forget you have children. There are some things that you have to make a priority. And you know, you have a lot of these characters out here who they are not men, man, man, meet all needs, boy, burden on you. As this character is growing older, as I told you, when narcissists get older, they get worse and worse and worse. It does not get better. And this, it, these stories that you hear, this is based on, it's true stories, it's true. All of these females who kill and men who kill, these are based on, it's in the news. These are true stories. So when you hear people talking about they've been married for 20, 30, and 40 years, no, no, you don't get two thumbs up from me. Not at all. Because I know the type of men that are out here today. I know the type. To earn a little spending money of his own, Dennis takes a part-time job at the local golf course. People saw Dennis as a happily married man, but they didn't know about his secret life. Ah, you heard that? You know, the grass is not always as green as people think it is. They said people saw him as a happily married man. They had no idea that this man has a secret life. So everything that you see, things are not always the way they appear to be. In his spare time, Dennis enjoys more vigorous pursuits. Dennis frequented the prostitutes on Spolvita Boulevard up in the San Fernando Valley, not far from their home. Did you hear that? He frequents with prostitutes not far from their home. He don't even have enough respect to keep it out of the neighborhood. He's sitting up here with prostitutes, so I know his wife, she's totally, totally neglected. By the time these prostitutes are finished draining his lizard, he doesn't have much of nothing for his wife. I'm sure he don't have no attraction, and that's probably why they fight so much within the marriage. You know, this is a rotten thing for a husband to do. Or even if it were a wife doing it to her husband, this is beyond rotten. But you know what? Like they say, baby, God don't like ugly. Mm -mm, no, they do pay. Listen up. Today, Dennis won't even have to leave work. 31-year-old Brandita Taliano walks right into his life. Brandita was kind of a typical street prostitute, worked in the uh, San Fernando Valley. Hi. Do you work here? I sure do, sweetheart. Brandita is a heroin addict from the wrong... <laughs> Did you hear this? And you have to see her strutting on the golf court coming towards the man that's how bold these women are they just come right up to your man honey she got on this micro mini dress with some uh pumps on and looking with that devious sexual look in her eyes she's a pig and she's a heroin addict so you know she don't take care of herself she's nothing but a walking std i don't care what she looked like on the outside this is what you call filth beyond filth side of the tracks she was the girl who was trying to find something better didn't know how to get there maybe i'll call you sometime do that oh you betcha dennis does call 
and Brandita sees her new customer as a ticket off the streets. You have to see how his eyes are looking at her lustfully. His eyes and his tongue is hanging down to his goddamn navel, you know? And it's just so disgusting. I feel sorry for women today. I really do. If they're not sitting up here laying up with prostitutes, they're laying up with men. Or they're on the down low. Or they're cheating with this person over here. Or they're not taking care of their responsibility in the household. Women of today, you have my pity. My pity. Here was this guy, this Air Force guy, this golf course guy who had a nice house. And maybe she felt, you know what? Maybe this is my turn. <laughs> Brandy revels in this extravagant new life. As the months go by, the bill goes up. Something was happening with Brandy and Dennis far beyond a hooker and a john. I mean, he paid for her apartment, he bought her food, he got her a car. You see all the things that he's doing for this broad? This is why he don't have any money for his wife. He's paying for this broad's rent. He's buying her cars, buying her food. This reminds me of how my ex narc did me. He was so busy taking care of prostitutes and street whores and all of these thoughts. He, he, you know, he couldn't do right by his family, his marriage or his household. The guy was a jerk. But that's okay. Just like this broad here, Brandita, she's a heroin junkie. Man, my ex, he's a freaking crackheaded bum junkie. How about that? Because God don't like ugly. Now where's all his money going? Right to the crack man. Dennis spends all his time They're an expensive habit. and money away from home. 55-year-old Joan has had enough. In 1991, she's handed a ticket to freedom. Joan had inherited $70,000 from her mother passing away. And because it was left as an inheritance, it meant that it was all hers. She didn't have to share it with her husband. So that was her way out. Isn't that great to hear? She inherited $70,000. Now she doesn't have to depend on this character's income. She could remain her lifestyle. You know, this would be a beautiful thing for her. And she's like one of my girls. She's ready to say, I'm not taking this. I'm not putting up with this. She's ready to bounce. You know, even though she should have left a long time ago. And maybe if she would have left a long time ago, mm, you'll see what I mean. You're not getting the house. Yeah, we'll see about that. She was prepared now to move forward with the divorce because she could then afford to maintain her lifestyle without very much change. So you expect to get all of your inheritance plus half of my assets? Divorce means Dennis will lose everything he holds dear, his money and his mistress. Now this character actually have the nerve, the audacity to want to honestly fight with her when she goes for the divorce. His guilt alone should tell her, you could have the house, you could have everything because I know I'm the one that screwed up. Okay, but that's not plausible to people like him. You know what I mean? They can't see. This is narcissistic. This part of it is narcissistic. You're going to see the psychopathic part later on down, down the road. But this is what I'm talking about when it comes to these relationships of today. You have got to find yourself a man who's on God's team. I'm talking about a real man on God's team, not pr pretending like these pastors that you find out they're raping boys and having sex with every freaking woman in the church. No, I'm talking about someone who's genuinely on God's team, who loves Jehovah God and Jesus Christ like crazy. That's the only way you're going to be ha happy this day and age. I think Dennis realized his financial life was about to be seriously affected. He didn't want to be left with nothing. He didn't want to split his pension with her. He's threatening me. Yeah, I am. Dennis desperately wanted to prevent his wife from divorcing him because it would have financially devastated him. On a spring morning in 1991, one of Joan's co-workers calls at their home. Mrs. Dolly did not show up at the Hallmark store to work. Joan! Her friend, who was the owner... Anybody home? 
became deeply concerned and was unable to rouse anybody at the door. So she let herself in the house and found Joan's body. Yeah, the poor woman, they found, her neighbor found her body. She's all bloody. She's a bloody mess in the bed. She's a bloody mess. She was finally getting ready to get out of this misery with her $70,000 inheritance. And look what happens. Why? Because he doesn't want to have to lose any of his money or lose the home or better yet his, not even a mistress. That ain't no mistress. That's a filthy prostitute. A dirty, nasty, filthy, piggy prostitute. Mistress. A freaking filthy pig. And she's laying in this bed all blundered up in a bloody mess. Joan has been bludgeoned to death. It looks like a bungled robbery. The assumption is, well, burglars broke in and she, she was startled awake, interfered with the burglary, and they killed her to avoid her being a witness. Under Joan's fingernails, forensics find human tissue from her attacker. But in 1991, DNA tracing is in its infancy. They knew there was DNA there, and they'd hoped someday maybe that DNA would provide the answers to what happened. Joan. So now they have the DNA underneath her fingernails, but back in those days, DNA was, you know, not really used. I know someone who was convicted of something that he did not do. He did not do. And he had the proof and the evidence if they would have um, used DNA back then, but they didn't use it. And then when the DNA came in where they could use it, and then they went back to try to find the, 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 the garments where the, uh, the, 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 the stuff was on the garments, they, the, 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 what, courts, the police, they had lost the garments. This would have totally cleared the person with DNA. It was horrible. But anyway, let's get back to our show. Let's get back to poor Joan. Husband Dennis had an early start at the golf course. The police call him home to break the sad news. Dennis basically doesn't know anything at all about it. He has no clue how this could possibly happen. Joy, you're stressed. Dennis is not behaving like a man in mourning. He was absent a lot of emotion that one would expect because your wife of 35 years had simply been brutalized in this fashion. Yeah, you can see his facial expression. He has no remorse. He has no sorrow. He has nothing. This is not only your wife, but this is also the mother of your children. This is monstrous. This is what's behind the mask of the narcissist. Two days after his wife is buried, Dennis seeks solace in Sin City. Got this in the bag. I mean, this was his wife of 35 years. Who does that? Who goes on a Las Vegas holiday right after she's been brutally murdered? Who does? Obviously, Dennis and Miss uh, Brandita. <laughs> you have to see them sitting at the Las Vegas tables having the time of their life. I've been to Las Vegas. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's great. They don't call it Sin City for nothing. Trust and believe. Casino surveillance cameras catch Dennis with a special someone. The police want to know who. And they're thinking, who is she? I mean, his wife just died. Who's this gal he's hanging around with? That woman was eventually identified as Brandita. Brandita was living the high life. He was taking her to Vegas, buying things. She had it made. But before long, Brandy's glittering world will come crashing down. Oh, yes. <laughs> they searched. Is definitely gonna come crashing down along with Miss Brandita. 
<laughs> life is good, honey. That's what I'm saying. Just hang in there. Trust me when I tell you, your heavenly father, he got you. He got you. It took them like two years for them to start reaping. Two or three years before they started to reap. But it, 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 come, it gets them. It gets you. It's going to come back and bite them right in the behind. Watch. Her apartment and found a bunch of jewelry. Guess who that jewelry used to belong to? It's the winter of 1993 in L.A. For two years, Brandita Taliano and her sugar daddy, Dennis Dolly, live it up. Thanks to an inheritance from Dennis's murdered wife, Joan. Two years after a crime has passed is enough time for the perpetrator to become comfortable, to think that maybe they got away with it. But their party is about to end. <laughs> it's true. After two years, they done let their guards down. What is it, you? I'm in the middle of a, doing a video right now. I can't, can I tell, talk to you later, Thiek? Anyway, they've let their guards down. They think everything is smooth sailing now, right? Mm-hmm. Listen in. Dita is arrested on a drugs charge. Brandy gets arrested. And when she gets arrested, the cops think about that old case involving Jones' murder. And they think also about the advances in DNA. By now, DNA analysis is common. This is good. They're scraping the inside of her mouth. They are taking her DNA because now DNA, you know, it's more evolved. Now, let's listen in again. This is amazing. I'm, I'm loving this. The tissue found under Joan's nails matches Brandy's DNA. <laughs> and there's something else tying her to the crime. During the course of her detention there, they discovered all this jewelry in the bottom of her purse. And it just happened to be Joan Dolly's jewelry. This isn't Brandy's first stint in prison. A few years earlier, when Brandy Taliano is locked up for theft, she has one loyal visitor, Dennis Dolly. Hey, how you doing? Brandita was in and out of custody. How do you think I'm doing? Have you got the stuff? Dennis started visiting her in jail. He bought her drugs when she needed drugs. Dennis wants something in return. Have you got someone? You know, for the big job. So now he's slipping her the drugs, the heroin underneath the table, which he's jeopardizing his freedom because if they check you when you're coming inside these prisons to visit people, they damn sure damn new almost do a strip search on you. So how he manages to pull that off, I don't know. But anyway, of course, he's only doing that for her because he needs her to do something for him. Listen in. During one of those visits to the jail, the subject came up that he needed help. He needed someone to help him with a big job. And did Brandy know anybody? His name's Gary. He'll do it for the money. And Brandy came back with a couple of ideas, a couple of gang members from L.A. The big job is to kill Dennis's wife. She sleeps on that side. I don't care what you do. You can rape her, beat her, whatever. So long as she's dead. Isn't that sick? So she slips the name of somebody to him underneath the table. And now we got these two, these two butchers or two whatever the hell, these brutes, these monsters. And then her husband has the name, the nerve, Betty, had to say, I don't care what you do to her. You can rape her. You can beat her. I don't care what you do as long as she's dead. This is his wife, the mother of his children. Really? Dennis tells the two men he's employed to murder his wife of many, many years, the mother of his children, that they can go ahead and rape her if they want to, just make sure she's dead when it's over. He hated her. But one of the potential hitmen is arrested on an unrelated charge. 
which put an end to this plan because the two gang members needed each other to do the job. So it halted the plan. With his divorce looming, Dennis is on a deadline. It became urgent that he do something quickly. When his low-class lover is released from jail, Dennis has the answer. Dennis decides to take matters into his own hands, and he needs some help. He needs Brandy. So he tells Brandy to come over late at night, and he lets her inside. He probably promised her she'd be the next Mrs. Dolly. And she wanted out of her situation. Dennis Dolly was armed with a golf club. Mrs. Dolly was asleep in the master bedroom. I don't think she suspected anything until she was startled awake in her bedroom to see Dennis wielding. So he has a golf club and the woman is there sleeping. And then you see her wake up because, you know, you hear somebody in the room and she wakes up. And to her sudden surprise, this Miss Prostitute Filthy Pig walking STD is holding her hands on the bed while Dennis is taking the golf club and beating his wife and bashing her. And she's a bloody mess and she's screaming and he's continuously plungering her. It's sick. A golf club, this strange woman. To get the life she wants, Brandita must take Jones. Brandy grabs her and holds her down. And that's how Brandita's DNA ended up under the nails of Mrs. Dolly. She's dead. They then scrambled through the house, tossed everything. They just sort of set the stage in a very poor way that a robbery had gone wrong. They've stolen Joan's life. Now they squander her inheritance. Dennis spent his ill-gotten gains on a boat, a jacuzzi, a waterbed, and a gazebo. That's what Joan's life and their marriage was worth to him. With money as a powerful motive, and damning DNA evidence, Brandita Taliano and her lover Dennis are charged with the murder of Joan Dolly. He was the most average guy in the world. No one could believe that inside of him was the ability to be this evil. In 1997, Dennis Dolly is convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to life without parole. <laughs> dies in prison six years later. I don't think Dennis loved Brandy. I don't think he loved Joan. I don't think he loved anything or anyone. Dennis was all about himself. Now, isn't that a narcissist? He didn't really love this prostitute, this filthy whore. He didn't love his wife. He didn't love his kids. He didn't love anyone or anything except for himself. And like they said, you look at this Dennis character and he looks just like the average Joe. Just like the average nice guy in the neighborhood behind the mask of the narcissist. Brandita Taliano is also convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to life. Brandy and Dennis had very different aspirations, but they both stop at nothing to get their way. All Brandita wanted now they got their way how about that for getting your way how about that for justice i'm gonna have a good day today i'm going to work i'm going back after what two days off and i feel so good i feel wonderful <laughs> listening to things like this just makes my day anyway it's 5 11 now i'm gonna go and make myself a nice cup of coffee uh 5 30 i do my bible reading my daily text but I got some time, I make coffee and I'm gonna straighten up a little bit. But isn't that wonderful how you see how karma, karma is, it, it, it comes at you. I don't care who, who, you, who it is. We know what karma is, that's God said, trust me, vengeance is mine, I will repay. It may seem like they're getting off. It may seem. Now when it comes to uh, uh, June, you know, she's in God's hands right now. Out of her misery, she was miserable with that miserable 
sack of manure of a husband that she had. And it's up to God now what's going to happen to June. I'm just so happy that she's, she no longer has to be uh, disrespected and abused and treated so, so badly. You know? Anyway, I wanted to share that with you this morning, my beautiful babies. This is Sheila True Love. Until next time, cheerio! <laughs>